got some great information for you on uh, this video today. I'm going to start off with uh, some fly uh, selection advice from Rich over at Fish West Fly Shop in Sandy and also some info on how to fish those flies uh, as you go up in the high Uenas. So it's uh, some great information for the lakes and for the streams up there. And then after that, uh, I've got some uh, footage of fishing up in Gooseberry Creek, up above uh, Fairview Canyon in Sanpee County, and also over at Clear Creek, which is a little stream that runs through the town of Schofield into Schofield Reservoir. As you'll see, the, uh, the trip to Gooseberry didn't work out so well. So it's always good to have a option B if you go someplace where you're not quite sure how the fishing's going to be. Uh, hopefully within 15-20 uh, minutes away you can be on another stream or, or another body of water where you have a good chance of success so you don't get uh, stuck driving a couple hours to some, to some stream and uh, it turns out that it's not quite what you'd hoped for. Anyway, enjoy the video. Go fishing. Get up in the high Uenas. July, August, early September. Beautiful time to be up there and the fishing's always great. This is Rich Lake from Fish West, a fly shop here in Sandy, Utah, with some tips on fishing up in the uh, high Uintas this year. Hey guys, yeah, so uh, this year the Uintas has been fishing really well. Um, you know, ice off came early, early in the mid spring, and so the fish were hungry. Um, so we got a few fly patterns we can go over real quick to uh, help you catch some of those fish in those high elevation lakes and the smaller creeks. So the first pattern I want to talk about is the Chubby Chernobyl, this guy here. Um, you know, it's a little ant pattern that you can uh, skate across the surface. Um, what I like to do with that guy is chuck it as far out um, in the lake as I can and micro strip them back. Um, most of the time I'll put a dropper on, on these guys as well because they can hold quite a bit of weight. Next up, we've got the PMX. Um, this is a hybrid, in my opinion, a hybrid pattern. It can represent, you know, stone flies as well as beetles and flying ants. Um, again, just throw that onto the, the lake and uh, micro strip it back to you. Um, next up, we got some triple doubles. These again are an ant pattern. More natural. Um, with these, I like to actually target fish. So I'll look around the lake to fish that are actively rising and try to target them with, with this guy and just let this sit in the zone in which they're feeding at. Next up, we just got some typical uh, parachute patterns. Always a go-to, no matter the time of year, in my opinion. Um, size definitely matters. Um, with it being summer, we can get away with some larger patterns. Um, so what I got here is just your par your standard parachute atoms, as well as the purple haze. Um, both these patterns are, are great um, to get picky fish. Um, I do like them a little bit smaller um, up the, up in the Uintas, um, easier to fit in the fish's mouth, and they look a little bit more realistic. But uh, don't be don't hesitate to throw the bigger ones as well. Uh, next down the line, you've got your, your elk hair caddis. Um, you know, this is the summertime bug. You know, all the, all the rivers that I fish have them in there. Um, and so this is just a staple. Um, again, it can mimic a few different things, caddis being one, small moths being another. Um, and then depending on the color, some yellow sallies as well for those, for those lower rivers. Um, next up is stimulator, <clears throat> just an attractor, um, get those fish moving, brings them up from the deep. So I like to, like to fish those as well. Um, these, these two I also like to fish to actively feeding fish, um, looking for, for their heads up and uh, throwing them within a couple feet of where that ripple was. Um, lastly down the line, <clears throat> we've got some caddis patterns, um, some, some nymphs. So with these guys, I like to drop these off of a, a foam grasshopper or some of those chubby Chernobyls um, with a, about a three foot tag. And again, I will uh, you know, throw, throw my rig out as far as I can. And if I'm using a dropper, I'll let these sink 
for anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds before I start retrieving them back, just micro stripping them. Um, gotten a lot of a lot of little brookies on the strip with with some of these smaller nymphs. And then lastly, got the seal leech. Um, if you like throwing streamers, that's your go-to bug for up in the Uintas. Um, really easy to tie, but very effective. Um, I mean, they come in a variety of colors, depending on what water you're you're uh, fishing. So again, just throw this out as far as you can in the middle of the lake, and then uh, mess up with your, mess with your retrieves. Uh, st maybe start a little bit quicker, and if you don't have any reaction, slow it down a little bit. Um, you can also just kind of jig them through the lake as well, and, and fish will be willing to eat that. Right now. So those are my top picks for the Uintas. Um, make sure you head up there. Temperatures are quite cooler up there when we're sweating down here in the valley. So uh, gives you a nice little break. The fishing has been great. Um, just remember out there, if you're fishing any of the freestones, take your thermometers and check water temps. And uh, <clears throat> if you ever want to learn how to fly fish, swing on by Fish West. Um, any Saturday, uh, we do classes from 11 to 1. So you can sign up here at the shop or give us a call. They are uh, they are free, so well worth it. Go get them, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Rich. Yep. 18 here, and I am at Gooseberry uh, Creek, uh, flowing out of Gooseberry Reservoir in San Pete County. Uh, it's up Fairview Canyon. Uh, you can find the reservoir if you uh, if you look hard enough. It's not overly well marked, but uh, it is possible to find it. It's got a pretty little stream that comes out of it. I believe it runs down into uh, Schofield Reservoir for about seven miles, but I've never been down the whole uh, length of it, so I don't know for sure. I'll be fishing, you know, the mile or so below the dam and seeing what I can do. It's primarily rainbows and cutthroats here. I uh, plan on using mostly dry flies. I'm gonna throw some beetles, terrestrials, uh, ants, elk caracatus, uh, maybe some humpties and see what I can do. Uh, I'll also nymph maybe a little bit. Uh, I'm thinking of using prince nymphs, uh, bead-headed prince nymphs, something to kind of catch their attention. Also uh, maybe uh, some fox squirrel nymphs, which uh, would be beaded and kind of look a little bit like a caddis uh, floating down a caddis larva. So we'll see what happens with those. It's, it's a neat little stream. I see there's two other fishermen that have gone down here before I've gotten here, but it doesn't get a lot of attention, so I'm going to take a camera and go down the river and see what, uh, see what I can find. Walking down the creek here at Gooseberry, and once you go just a little bit down the stream, you come to this uh, weird-looking thing. It's kind of a silo, but it's got these... Uh, I kind of showed it. it's got these big drains coming out of it. Looks like something out of a horror movie. I got a feeling it's probably a portal to another dimension. I don't know for sure. But uh, just looking at it, it uh, looks like bad juju to me, so I think I'll just keep walking. Well, Gooseberry really didn't uh, pan out. I went there, walked down about oh, half a mile, three quarters of a mile. The only fish I could see or anything that I uh, I could get interested in anything was uh, about three inch uh, little cutties. Very, very small fish. Uh, I actually uh, flushed some fish out trying to find some bigger fish, but was never able to find anything uh, of any size. So as much as I'm not a, a fisherman depends on catching big fish, I do like to catch uh, fish that aren't uh, miniature. So I've come here to Mud Creek or Clear Creek, depends on uh, who you talk to. It's a stream that runs into the town of Schofield and then runs into uh, Schofield Reservoir. They've got a, a kind of it fenced off here in parts by Schofield, uh, easy access. So I'm going to fish here. Uh, I'm going to uh, try some dry flies, throw some elk hairs out. If that doesn't work, I'm going to uh, go with uh, woolly buggers. So uh, it's a good stream, it's a small stream with some little deep holes. It's just about perfect for drifting willy buggers through these little holes and seeing what we can pick up. So I'm going to see what happens and uh, give a report.
He's a nice trout in a little stream. Picked him up on a woolly bugger here. Uh, tiger trout. Uh, just drifting a black woolly bugger. And uh, second, uh, second drift through this little hole, he pounced on it. So we'll see how, uh, I see how this continues. Picked up a, uh, picked up a little cutthroat here. Once again, just drifting. I got an olive woolly bugger on now. I thought I'd switch it around. But I'm just kind of standing. Maybe you can see where I'm fishing. Just kind of standing here and drifting it down through uh, this little hole. I'm not doing anything but letting it have a free drift. Uh, yeah, and the fish are, are hitting it on the drift. So a small cutthroat, but I've been picking up some fish here as I go along. As you can see, it's a fairly small stream. I'm just finding these little deeper little holes and drifting it through and, and picking fish up. Picked up a really nice uh, cutthroat. Whoa, you don't want to come in. Uh, right here on a little green woolly bugger. He just popped off. Hope we got a look at him. I, I just drifted it right under that little uh, that little grass right there and picked up that nice cutty. So anyway, uh, having a lot of fun here. There's been a little, here's some of the, the river here. I've had a lot of chases. Uh, had some that they have uh, hit and not hooked up. But the, uh, the woolly bugger's been fun because I don't have to worry so much about losing uh, my flies into all the little dead wood and things like that around here. I can steer it a little bit better and the fish seem to like it. Hey, just wrapping it up uh, from Clear Creek today. Had a fun day. Uh, gooseberry turned out to be a bust. Uh, maybe some bigger fish will come up in there. Maybe some will get washed down out of the reservoir. I don't know, but right now it's all pretty miniature fish. Luckily, I came over to uh, Clear Creek or Mud Creek. It's not the Clear Creek down by Richfield. This is the one by Schofield. Uh, caught a uh, fair number of cutthroats, I guess. Uh, one nice uh, big tiger trout. And the trucks are running along the road here, the uh, coal trucks. So, anyway, uh, it was a good day. Caught them on woolly buggers, olive and black. You know, a little stream like that, sometimes it's really tough if you can't get them up to come up to dries. It's really tough to nymph because there's so much, uh, so many sticks and vegetation and stuff in the water that uh, this with a woolly bugger, you can kind of guide it, you can jig it, uh, you can strip it, you can do all sorts of things with it to get some action. You can drift it under uh, cut banks and uh, do all sorts of fun things. So that's what I did today. Uh, had lots of follows. I uh, didn't catch a ton of fish, but I had a lot of nice fish follow it. I had a lot of flashes, some hits I missed. It was a good day. Uh, it's always beautiful here uh, when you're up in the mountains. So go fishing, have some fun. If you get a chance to come up here and, and try this stream, give it a shot. You can fish it uh, in the spot I did down below by the town, or you can come up a little higher here towards the coal mine where I'm at now. There's some nice uh, cutties in this little stream up here too. So go give it a shot and uh, enjoy a good day fishing.